What's up everybody? I've been playing a ton of Sorcerer in Diablo 4 and I just want to share the most broken and powerful build I think I've ever tried. And it's the Ice Shards Frost build. It is so powerful, I can't believe it. I tried this a while ago and couldn't really get it working. And then I made a few changes and tweaked it a little bit and now it just feels completely broken. And I want to share it with you all because it's so much fun. I'm melting nightmare dungeons like they're nothing. I'm just breezing through packs of elites and destroying them in seconds. So let's go over the build now in full and hopefully you can get this going because I want you all to have as much fun as I am. It's so good. So the build focuses around grouping up big stacks of enemies. You, you build up a big group, use Frost Nova to freeze them all, and then use Ice Shards to melt down an entire pack of frozen enemies. As a sorcerer, we unlock our class specific ability at 15. And for this, we put in Ice Shard and that lets Ice Shard automatically attack frozen enemies. So as soon as you freeze them, you can just stand there AFK and everything will just start dying around you. It's, it's, it's awesome. And that's the kind of the core of the build. So here's, here's how you play it. You basically you pop Ice Shield, you teleport into the middle of a huge pack, you use Inferno, you know, the big fire snake to collect everything together. It sucks them all into the middle. And then you Frost Nova to freeze them all. You spam Ice Shards and every single thing should die. It's that easy. It's pretty much the same on bosses. You just pop Frost Nova, Ice Shield and spam Shards like a little turret. So hopefully watching these insane bursts in the background has you sold on the build, fingers crossed. So let's get straight into this and break down everything. First up, aspects and gear. So gear stats. For this build to work, you need to be doing as many ice novas as possible. So this is your key thing, cooldown reduction. Every single piece of gear you can get that on, get that on. I would even go so far as to take a single handed weapon and an offhand to have more chance at getting cooldown reduction as a stat. Go to the occultist and re-roll your stats if you can. Uh, you could probably afford at least a couple of re-rolls on each one and just keep farming for these cooldown reductions. The more you can use Frost Nova, the more powerful you'll be. Simple as that. The next thing is you want to spam ice shards consistently. I would look for mana reduction as your second, um, your second key stat because if you can reduce that, you can spam more ice shards. And you don't need to be constantly casting ice shards, but you need to cast enough to kill the pack you're on. So if you can get it so that you can you can get the whole pack done and move on to the next one and your mana's back, you, you, that, you've won really, that's it. So those two things are like your key stats. That's what makes this build work. Mana reduction and cooldown reduction. They're the, the big two. After that, you, you just wanna go for ice damage, uh, things that give you uh, extra points in Frost Nova, ranks in Frost Nova, uh, vulnerability damage, because when you freeze them, you make them vulnerable. Anything that increases your damage, increases barriers, things like that. But those two are like the things you should be rolling for. Everything else is just nice, like intelligence, willpower. It's just nice to have. Okay, away from the, the, the big stats you're looking for, let's go to the uniques. For uniques, there are two uniques that take this from a good build to a completely busted, most powerful sorcerer build, in my opinion. And the first is Ice Heart Bias. Bias, Brace, Bias. This means that when, when a frozen enemy dies, it has a chance to unleash a Frost Nova. And this starts the whole cycle again. And as I was saying, your build lives and dies on Frost Nova. What you see is you freeze something, you, fr you freeze a bag of 10 enemies, you kill them, uh, a couple die early, like little flies or something, and that will trigger another Frost Nova. Everything gets hit again, and the cycle continues, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's incredible. It feels so good. The other thing is Raiment of the Infinite. I think that's how you say it. This is a chess piece and it gives you the ability to teleport. And then when that teleport ends, so when you get to your destination, it pulls all enemies into you and stuns them. The big thing for this, it doesn't sound huge, but the big reason you take this is once you have this, you can take the, the big fire snake out of your build and swap it for either a fire shield for more defense or deep freeze for more damage and more utility really. So yeah, as, a, as an Ice Shard Sorcerer, these are the two uniques that you should be on your farm list of things that always be looking out for. Um, and then onto the aspects. The aspects of Control deals more damage to frozen enemies, of course, huge. Aspect of Piercing Cold to give your Ice Shards piercing damage, absolutely awesome. Especially when your Ice Shard is, when your Frost Nova is off cooldown, you can still pierce with your Ice Shards, really, really good. Um, conceited Aspect increases your damage when you have a barrier active. And because this is such an offensive build, you're gonna need a lot of barriers all the time. Um, Prodigy's aspect will give mana back when you use a cooldown. This is really important if you get it early in the game when you know you don't have that mana reduction gear. But it also helps uh, on bosses because on bosses you can just hold down the button more and do just do more shards. I'd say these four are key to making the build work rather than just give you a list of 20 to go get. These are the ones that really really make the build work. After that I'd just go for whatever you want. Things that increase your frost damage, things that combo with barrier are really good. The beauty of this build is that you can tailor it. If you're dying a lot take more defensive ones. Take more ones that um, buff the barrier or work well and combo with barrier. Um, if you're wanting more damage, take damaging aspects like Storm Swell or just equip whatever you have available from leveling. So that should cover all of the gear really, the sort of stats you're looking for on your yellow gear or your legendaries. 
the aspects and legendary gear you're looking for, and then the two uniques you really want to be hunting down. Next, let's move on to the, the skills and the setup of this build. So first up, the enhanced skills. So as a sorcerer, you get to enhance two abilities, which make them really powerful and give them special effects. Uh, ice shards is, is the number one. That's what this build is all based around. Ice shards automatically fly out at frozen enemies. Plus to them, ice shard them down automatically. Plus the attacks are actually doing huge. Next, this one's a little more decisive. I've seen some people use fireball for the second enhancement as it will cause enemies to explode into fireballs on death, which is great because they're all clustered together. I personally think Fire Bolt works better. I've gotten a, I've gone between the two a few times, and they both have their strengths. But I think Fire Bolt is better. It it sets enemies on fire, and it's great for bosses, elites, and it just makes sure that everything on your screen is burning all the time. Okay, now let's talk about the the, the real detail, the skill tree. So you want to pick up the Fire Bolt. This is your I'm out of mana move. It doesn't do much. You don't really spec much into it, but it's what you do when you're out of mana. And then you go down to here to get flickering fireball and that generates mana when you hit a burning enemy everything's going to be burning because you have fireball spec into your enhancements so this is your mana regeneration especially at low levels when you're constantly out of mana then you move down into ice shards five out of five this it's huge if you get any gear that has ice shard ranks take it it's huge that's your main main damage dealer you want to go into destructive which makes them vulnerable there's so much gear and aspects that proc off vulnerable, um, make do more damage to vulnerable enemies, things like that. Huge, definitely go into that. I do have some points here, but it's just because I've got my renowned up. When you get your renowned up, you start getting skill points. Um, not not relevant to the build really, but if you've got points to, to dump, I'm putting them in here. Okay, the next core ones are flame shield. If you're going to be using it, you can put one point in. It's a nice shield to have. Teleport, again, one point because all you care about is the movement speed. I would go into Shimmering because then as you land, you get a 30% damage reduction. You're going to be teleporting into the middle of huge packs of elites and mobs. So that 30% damage reduction is definitely needed. Glass Cannon, high risk, high reward, 18% more damage, 9% extra damage taken. Try not to worry about that. Okay, and then we go into Ice Armor. This you're going to be using on cooldown. This is going to be on you all the time. You want to take the... Uh, I, I take Mystical Ice Armor. I've seen some builds that take Shimmering, but I think Mystical is better. Like I said, there are things that synergize with Vulnerable well, so start picking them up when you see them. This is one of those more barrier when you attack vulnerable enemies. Then into Frost Nova. There are two parts of this build, you know, the Ice Shards and Frost Nova. So this is a big one that you'd five out of five. Uh, you get ranks in Frost Armor for, on pieces as well. So you can see I've got plus two. So I'm actually overcapped on this. And then you go down to here. Mystical makes enemies vulnerable for four seconds. Increase the six against bosses. Again, another thing synergizing with vulnerable. You're going to see that a lot in this build. If I had more points, I would cap this out as well. Elemental Attunement. It makes things reset faster. Uh, really helpful. But, you know, we're, we're limited on points. And I go for more, more attack than defense if I can. Um, align the elements, 1% damage reduction, just so you can unlock these two. You've got the uh, spend 100 mana, get damage reduction, huge. And then using a cooldown grants 30% of your life as a barrier. Again, like I say, very offensive build. So passive barriers and barriers are really, really helpful to, to just keep you alive. We don't really take that many defensive abilities. But you see, we do take a lot of passives. So you've got Inner Flames to unlock Devouring Blaze. This increases your crit chance, your, your crit strike against burning enemies. Everything you do in this game, you're going to be fighting burning enemies because of the fireball. Everything you attack is going to be burning, which is which is huge. Also increases the 50% on immobilized enemies, which is why you'll see some people recommend you take Meteor. I personally don't think too much about the crit in this build. It doesn't feel that needed, but anyway, you can if you want. Next up, permafrost, 15% increased damage to elites, huge. 12% increased cold damage to vulnerable enemies, perfect because everything else we've taken synergizes with vulnerable enemies. 12% damage to chilled enemies, up to 24% to frozen everything you fight was going to get frozen freeze everything cold damage against vulnerable enemies up to 20 percent chance to generate mana absolutely essential mana again means more ice bolts the circle continues now is where we start going away from you know what you have to do all of that i would say we talked about so far is a must if you're going to make this build you can tweak a few things but these are like the core of the build now we get down to this thing first up the inferno this is this is a choice right because the inferno and then into prime inferno it pulls everything together once it's in the middle Ice Nova, Ice Shard them all down. The best thing about this build is, if you have the unique we talked about earlier, the Raiments of the Infinite, that when you teleport, you suck everything into you, that reduces the need for this completely. So if you have that, you can completely take these out because your teleport will do the job of this whole skill. So what you can do instead is take Deep Freeze and you can take Prime Deep Freeze, which gives you a barrier. And yeah, you've you've, you've now got an ultimate. So you kind of want to work towards getting the, the unique, and then you can switch away from the snake into the deep freeze, the ultimate, which is 
kind of the end of this build. That's when this is perfect. That's the, the last change you'll make. And the beauty of that is the teleport is going to be up more than the snake is. You know, you're going to be able to do this a lot more. You'll have less downtime and you can get things that then benefit this, this build better. You have things like this while deep freeze is active, ice spikes explode around you and you have a 50% increased radius. It, it's huge. So anyway, get, get, get off topic. Start with this. Once you get the unique, switch over to deep freeze. Anyway, moving down. This is your second like big choice at the end. You have this here. I would say at the start when you're if you're if you're doing this if you're using this to level you're leveling through this to learn it you're using it as soon as you hit 50 then yeah take avalanche it means that you get 10 percent chance to make your next cast of ice shards which will be a lot consume no mana huge as soon as you hit 50 leading up to 50 you're gonna have huge mana issues you're always gonna be out of mana and the beauty of it is chance is doubled against vulnerable enemies and you know what we said about synergies with vulnerable we go for that all the way through this build so i would even say after 50 you can keep this it's good it's a nice you know it's a nice passive to have no, i i prefer this i i switched to this recently after freeze expires enemies explode for 25 said that their damage you dealt some while they're frozen if you have the um the chest piece this thing uh, the legs sorry if you have the ice heart brace which means that frozen enemies have a chance to unleash a frost nova if you have this frost nova and explosions are going off constantly then having this passive at the end is an absolute game changer this just means that like the clips i've been showing in the background as soon as you freeze one, as soon as you freeze them and one explodes, everything resets, more explosions, more frost novas. And this just makes that extra, you know, juicy. It, it's it's what this build is all about. This huge burst of all the enemies just blowing up at the same time. It's it's fantastic. It's what makes this feel so broken to me. But if you haven't, if you feel this is more comfortable, totally get it. But yeah, that's it for the skill tree. This is this is everything. Obviously, you can tweak around certain gear if you don't have the ice art, if you don't have the um the infinite chest piece. Onto the um Onto the Paragon, ah, I don't want to bore you and go through like 100 Paragon points and go through every single, we take five strength here. I don't want to bore you with all that, it's too long. But when you when you do get here, if, you, if you're watching this earlier in the game and you're not at end game, you're not, you're not even at 50 yet, then I wouldn't worry too much about the Paragon board. It's, it's a big board, there's lots of choices to make here and you're always progressing, that's the main thing. You do get to choose secondary boards and I would recommend Icefall and Frigid Fate because they both work really well with ice things. So basically these boards, you put different... You, you unlock pieces and you move along the board and then there's places where you can place glyphs and there's like passive abilities in here and ice fall and frigid fate work really well with ice attacks burning instinct is probably a really good third board because you know fire damage and we we do really well with fire damage and we spend points on fire damage and we have a fire thing enhanced so that's a good start and then and then there's glyphs as you get to 50 you go into nightmare dungeons these things called glyphs drop and then when you get to the end of the dungeon you can level up the glyphs and the glyphs do different things once you socket them uh, the control glyph is probably the number one priority 20 percent increased damage to frozen enemies obviously huge with this build flame feeder is really good which increases damage to burning enemies every single thing you attack is going to be burning uh territorial is a good one which is 10 percent damage when enemies are close to you and then frostbite is really nice as well it's more damage to shield targets and reduced damage to enemies once they've been frozen so yeah that those four are like four really nice ones that you can that you can start working on start leveling them up but there's defensive ones in here there's offensive ones in here they're four that i really like and would probably recommend but i don't think they make or break the build but yeah I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up here i think that covers more than the basics that should be more than enough to get you going and really having fun with this build there are guides out there that will, will break down an ice shard build there's loads of different variations of it some better than others in my opinion and some it'll be more your play style than others you might look at this one and go well i want meteor well i want this well there are builds out there that people have made that have that in and i'm sure you'll find them and then if you want, you can literally find someone who's mapped out the entire Paragon board and you can copy it point for point. But for this video, I think that covers more than enough. So I'm going to wrap it up here. This is my first uh, Diablo 4 build video. So it would mean a lot if you if, you, if this helped. If you like and let me know in the comments, that would really, really help me know I'm doing something right. I'm going to work on some other Sorcerer ones, maybe a leveling build. And I think for leveling, I'm going to show an electric build that I think is faster than this. I think this really pops off when you've got the gear but for leveling i think electric pulls a little further ahead so i'm gonna work on an electric leveling build anything else you want to see let me know in the comments I, i'm also making guides for diablo 4 at the same time so subscribe for more i've got some other videos i'll tag them down below and yeah just enjoy the game guys that's it take care and i'll see you in the next one